Welcome back, Shaloners. Well, I let you guys vote on the next topic, and you overwhelmingly came back with this. Drake. Today, we're going to be talking about the soft, whack, toxic fuckboy who is Drake. And I know you're like, Drake? Drake's so nice. Oh, is he? I'm going to break down the real tea on Drake and tell you lessons you can learn from his baloney and how to avoid similarly toxic guys in your life by asking one simple question. But first, just want to remind you guys, if you want to talk with me privately, find me on the Instant Go app. My username is ShallonXO and click chat to get connected. And I hope this will be the last video where we're going to have to go to Instant Go to talk to me because my website should be ready by the end of the week. So if there's certain things you want to see on the website, definitely let me know. I was thinking about having a place just for like happy ending, like sexy tip videos because I can't put them here on YouTube. YouTube, weirdly, doesn't like you talking about blowjobs for 30 minutes. Who knew? <laughs> so also follow me on Instagram at ShallonXO, where I let you guys vote on the next video topic and weigh in that way. And listen to my podcast, Girl on Top, out every Wednesday, every place podcasts are found, where I answer the best questions you guys submitted over the course of the week. So Drake, look, I have loved Drake for a long time, since he was wheelchair Jimmy, you know, like a long time. And it's it took me so long to get on board with the idea that Drake is a super, super toxic person. And like, if you look at him, he's a dorky Jewish Canadian guy, you know, like he, he dances like a dorky Canadian dude, right? Like, I feel like that's how like Shawn Mendes dances, like the Carlton, you know, just like dork machine. And I always thought he was like sweet, you know, his God's plan video, donating all of that stuff, which is amazing. And it will always be amazing. And I will always be in favor of a charitable person. However, there's a dark side to Drake. One that for whatever reason, the media has not talked enough about. Well, I'm here to correct the scales of justice, right? First and foremost, well, you know what? Perhaps not foremost, but first I want to talk about his insane new tattoo. And I know that seems minor, but to me, what people choose to get inked on their bodies forever is very, very indicative of their character in general. I have one tattoo. It's right here. It's a quill. And I got it when I published my first book. And I was like, I need to make it good because if I only want to get one, because if I have two, I'll have 20. You know, I'll just go crazy. Post Malone getting the always tired. That's indicative of someone who doesn't really think too much about the future. Haley Baldwin getting stuff all over her hands. That tells me she doesn't wash her hands enough because she doesn't understand what happens to the skin on your hands when you wash them the proper amount of times a day, which is many times. So Drake getting the Beatles walking across Abbey Road tattooed on his arm with his punk ass out in front because he beat their record. That tells me he has a lack of respect for people who came, who came before him. He is standing on the shoulders of giants and acting like he's that tall. He's a good rapper. He's not the Beatles. He didn't usher in a whole new school of music. But you know what? Okay, the Beatles stood on the shoulders of like black musicians in the rock and roll scene and like took that into, you know, white rock and roll. But they didn't have a tattoo with themselves out in front of B.B. King. They didn't do that. Drake does not have that kind of humility. And it's just so like self-aggrandizing and bizarre. But you know what? Let's pretend that it doesn't matter. What? Who cares? I want to talk about Drake and Rihanna because the more like I have to get this off my chest because it's been like brewing inside of me like this horrible festering splinter. And I talk a lot about psychological splinters. And if I don't like talk about how much I hate Drake for this, like I, it will drive me to drink. So I want you to picture a close relationship you've had with a guy or even just a friend where you have told them a deep, dark secret about yourself or really opened up about a super painful chapter in your life, right? And now I want you to picture that person that you told going to that, the person who created your toxic situation and becoming best friends with them. That's what Drake did to Rihanna. We all know what happened with Rihanna and Chris Brown, right? He beat the shit out of her. And we that's just all we saw. Very few people just snap like that all at once. Like crimes escalate, you know? And I believe he was hitting her for a long time and probably a long time after that too. I mean, look at how he behaved after they broke up with that thing at the Today Show when he tried to throw a chair through a window. There's something 
so interesting about Chris Brown. It's not interesting. It's disgusting. But like how I remember when I first saw him, like when he first first saw the scene, that stupid gum commercial. And I was like, that looks like the nicest, sweetest boy I've ever seen in my life. He's just like, he was like this ball of like beautiful little sunshine. I was like, wow, what a nice young man. And then after that Rihanna beating incident, it's like his, he physically changed. The madness within was reflected on his face. He looked honestly monstrous. He, you could see the evil radiating through his face and Karuchi, like her, everything she went through with him. I mean, <sighs> like he's a toxic, awful person, you know? And he, he's a, it's so sad. He's a great singer. He's very talented, but like, that doesn't mean you're a good person. And the Selena Gomez stands always come out of the woodwork. And when they're like, leave Selena alone. I was like, she's a shitty person. She's a liar. And she's a grifter who cons people out of their vital organs. And also she isn't really that talented. I was like, wind it back. Whisper singer, oh, whisper singer, I'm pretty. Give me a break. Like she's no Chris Brown, you know? But we all acknowledge that Chris Brown is a monster. And it's like horrifying to me that Hollywood like got so close to expelling him, but then the fans were like, it's okay. So Drake loved Rihanna, right? This is like the love story for the ages. Every single person knew that he loved Rihanna, including Rihanna. He tried to make that moment when he gave her that award all about him. He tried to kiss her and she curved him. It's like, this was her moment and you had to like get your big stupid face in there. Like, <sighs> So they did date. I mean, they had like an on-off romance for a long, long time. And he always loved her. And I think she was always very ambivalent about him. She saw the whackness. But I know that she confided in him about everything with Chris Brown. You think Chris Brown didn't rape her? I guarantee he did. If you can hit a woman, you can rape a woman. And if you can rape a woman, you can kill her. That's a very, very slippery slope. Oh, but he loves me. A lot of dead girls have said that. So I guarantee she really opened up to Drake and told her the reality and the horrors of that situation. But you know what? Let's say she didn't. Let's say she didn't speak one word about it and all he knew is exactly what the rest of us knew from the police reports and the, you know, the TV coverage. He claimed to love her. He claimed to love that girl. And when she had the audacity to simply not love him back, she didn't like sleep with his dad. She didn't talk shit about him in the media. She just wasn't into it. A run of the mill breakup that life doesn't always work out. Like, sorry, dude, we don't, every woman knows that. What did he do? He aligned himself with Chris Brown. He did a song with the, with the man who almost killed the woman he loved. Like it almost brings tears to my eye. It does. It's here. It's sickening. I don't care how much I liked Nice For What. And I love that song. Like, how have we as a society not, how have, how have the fans accepted that? I also find it really interesting that Rihanna never spoke out about this. I mean, to my knowledge, she didn't. If she did, like, let me know in the comments and link someplace, because I want to know. But I feel like I would have remembered it. I mean, this is what I do for a living. And I feel like I would have heard the resounding backlash of what the Fuck, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? And I really haven't heard that. I haven't heard that. I've heard, oh, that's kind of a bop. It's not. I'm not even going to say what their song is called. I can't remember. I've like blocked it out because it's stupid. And I don't want you to go listen to it and stream it and give it more juice. Just the whole thing is so nauseating to me. And now, now that we know that about Drake, what he's capable of, when he simply doesn't get what he wants. You know who he reminds me of? He reminds me of, um, you know, in Beauty and the Beast, Gaston, like the Gaston's little like bitch friend, LeFou, who's like, yeah, Gaston's the best. That's who he is. Like you see him at like basketball games, front row center. He's like crying like he wants to be a basketball wife himself. He's like, oh, he is a beta male. He's a beta male. When he doesn't get what he wants, he doesn't pick himself off, conduct himself with a modicum of dis dignity. He goes for the fucking jugular. He goes for pure, uncut, humiliating revenge against that person. Who, again, all she did was not love him back. He, you don't have to love him back. We don't owe men anything. And that's the issue with Drake, the entitlement. That goes back to that Beatles tattoo, the entitlement, the smug aspect of like, of course I got, of course I deserve this. It's sickening. 
Because this kind of entitlement is what makes a school shooter. I'm not saying that's going to be Drake, but you take this kind of like pathology to an extreme. I just talked about this actually in my Ed Sheeran and Post Malone video, where it's the sense of entitlement and revenge. I want revenge on what the world didn't give me. I don't look at my blessings. I don't look at everything I have, and I don't feel grateful and magnanimous that I even got to touch Rihanna with my fingers and my mouth. No, I'm going to focus on what she didn't give me, what she refused me. How dare she refused me? And you know what that tells me? He never saw her as a person. He saw her as a possession. I don't want one of my possessions to get up and walk out the door either because they belong to me. My shoes exist when I allow them to exist, when I put them on my feet. But I don't feel that way about my boyfriend. He is his own person. He's not a possession to me. Now we got to talk about Drake, yep, and Millie Bobby Brown. Okay, so she's 15. She's 15 years old. Drake is, I believe, 32. Even if he's 28, it doesn't matter. He's not 15 and a half, okay? There have been like a lot of like, you know, rumors and this. I know the tea. He is going after her in a hardcore way and he's not even like making it subtle. And you know who's enabling all of this? Her parents. Apparently she's got like a super toxic like stage dad and he's like, yeah, like go spend all this time, you know, with like adult men. You're 15 years old. I mean, she even have her period yet for goodness sakes. Like she's a child. And so Drake, again, is he's a predator and he's the reason he's going after someone so young is because again, he doesn't see women as people. He sees them as possessions. And what do I always say about big age differences. When the guy is way older and the girl is way younger, when they're in completely different life arenas, as I call it, he's not after a partner. He's after a fan. He's after a puppet. And young girls are very easily manipulated. They're ex inexperienced with life. They're certainly sexually inexperienced. And she's going to forgive things. The girls his age won't. No, I don't want to do that. No, that's not appropriate. He struck out with Rihanna, our ultimate queen and our ultimate hot-blooded animal, our confidence icon to the stars. So he's like, instead of him saying, I'm going to make myself better to stay in the Rihanna realm so I can date other incredible alpha females. Didn't work out with her, but I know that I am an alpha male. And you know what? I release her with love and I'm going to move on. No, no, no. He didn't do that. The beta male that he is, he went after her the Chris Brown thing. And then on the opposite end of the same spectrum of control and possession, he's going for a child that he can control and possess. He's like, consciously or not, he's like, I can't hang with the Rihannas of this world. I'm not good enough. I can hang with butt ugly porn stars that look like centaurs. I can hang with like trashy, like groupies who think their only value is their blowjob skills and they're stunting all over Instagram with gross. And I can hang with teenage girls. Because none of those people, the porn stars, the Instagram models, and the children, are going to call me on my stuff. None of them are going to hold me to a higher standard because they're either desperate or they don't know any better or both. So this is all adding up to a very, very worrisome and honestly kind of dangerous profile. Like, I don't think Drake's like a dangerous guy, you know, but like emotionally, obviously we know the damage that an older man can do on a 15 year old girl. I mean, it's, it can be catastrophic. And I always tell you guys like, stay away from older guys. They can do damage that will literally last for the rest of your life. They can traumatize you emotionally and sexually that you will never get past. I mean, you will learn to live with it, but like, these are not light decisions dating someone that who is twice your age. And I know I date way younger guys. My boyfriend's way younger, like way younger. <laughs> But women don't traumatize men in the same ways. First of all, we don't even like come at them in like that kind of sexual possessiveness way. I mean, I'm talking about like still in a similar life arena. Like me and my boyfriend are both still adults. He's like not in college or high school. Like we're working adults in New York City. So we're in the same life arena. But yes, if it's like one of, you know, these teachers who prey on their like 16 year old student, like that's not good. That's a predator. A predator is a predator is a predator, you know? And if you, are 21 and you didn't go to college and you've been working in corporate America and you're dating a 31 year old who's doing the same thing, you're in the same life arena. Okay. 
But you're never going to make the argument to me that a 15-year-old and a 32-year-old man have anything in common except for her bamboozlement and his manipulation. So what can we learn from this, right? Because I could sit here all day and talk shit about Drake, and I find myself doing that rather often. He's like, really made me mad. Mad. But what can we learn? Well, we need to avoid people like this, right? And I said at the beginning of this video, there's one question you can ask a guy to get a kind of a temperature check on his like issues of misogyny and entitlement. And that is, tell me about your worst breakup. Tell me about your worst breakup. It doesn't have to be like a serious like NCIS interrogation, but just see what he says. See how he speaks about someone who didn't give him what he wanted. And okay, you know what? Let's give a guy the benefit of the doubt because some breakups are messy and it really isn't their fault. Like I loved her. I gave her everything. Turns out she was sleeping with my brother and then she took the dog and she left. I would be bitter about that as well. Ask him about an unrequited relationship. Have you ever like fallen super hard for a girl that like didn't like you back basically? And see what he says. And not just what he says, but how he says it. Like, I remember that's what I asked my ex-boyfriend Joe because I, we met on Tinder and like, I needed to like get a good like temperature check of who this person was. Like, he's a very hot dude, very used to getting what he wants. And I was like, tell me about a girl who didn't like you back. And he's like, oh, Sasha, broke my heart, broke my heart. Ah, I'll love her forever. He said it the way you should with an element of wistfulness and the internal foundational belief that you don't always get what you want. Life ain't always fair. Moving on. It wasn't like, well, there's this bitch Sasha and she didn't like me back and I gave her a singing candy gram at school for Valentine's Day, but no, she wouldn't blow me in the parking lot after practice. That wasn't the vibe I got. And I have asked that question to guys and that is what I've heard. It's this seething resentment and entitlement. How dare that pair of shoes walk out the door? How dare that possession not obey me? And sometimes it's subtle. Men, like any virus, learn to adapt, right? They're clever. They know just to keep it to like a dull roar, you know? So ask them like, well, what did you do? Did you do anything? Did you do anything to get back at her? Lead the question a little bit because if he's the same normal person, he'll be like, back at her? No, no, I didn't need to like get revenge, right? But if you give someone enough rope, they'll hang themselves. Because if he's a shitty guy, he'll be like, oh yeah, I fucked her mom. That's what, and I slashed her tires. I took her cat and painted it like a raccoon so she couldn't find it anymore. That's what I did. You know, poke just enough because people who have nothing to hide, hide nothing. And they won't think it's a weird question. I mean, they will, but they won't have a weird ass answer, like just ready to go on deck. So do a little bit, a little bit of investigation and do not get caught up in pity. Because what's the number one thing a sociopath wants, right? I say this all the time, pity. And I'm not saying like Drake's a sociopath, but any kind of manipulative person deals in pity. I mean, think about it when you're late to work. Oh my God, like I was late, my tire blew out, and it's raining and blah, blah, blah. You use some sort of story to engender a modicum of pity, right? It gets you out of a lot of tough spots, make people feel sorry for you, gives you the benefit of the doubt, blah, blah, blah. Guys do this too, and it's so subtle. It's so subtle. And we as women have been conditioned to like put up our antenna for pitiful stories because we are supposed to be polite. We're supposed to not make waves, put on a happy face. It's fine. Of course you can come in and use this phone. Please don't kill me. No. So listen to the words he's using. Listen to the tone in his voice. Look at his body language. Does he get all clenched up? Like, whoa, like, like he's an animal puffed up, ready to fight. These are things that are never going to change. How a man views women never, ever changes. Men like that, dangerous men, need to be round up and put on an island where they can kill each other, just eat coconuts until they die of scurvy. Or coconuts probably have a lot of vitamin C. You know what I mean. They should not be in society, and we certainly should never ever try to tell ourselves that we can change them, that we can fix them, or we should be taking their side and then like, yeah, fuck Sasha. How dare she not like you? I mean, we can internally like think like, wow, she didn't like you. That's crazy. I've said that to boyfriends before. I was like, someone dumped you. That's crazy. 
you know, but you, you're not like, yeah, I hope she dies. Let's get her other cat. That's not good either. Don't align yourself with a psychopath, right? So to recap, Drake is awful. Rihanna is our queen. Millie Bobby Brown is in a very, very dangerous position. Like I wish I could just like put her in a sack and take her out to the desert and have her reprogrammed or something like have her raised with a healthy family. <sighs> and if we want to make sure we're with an alpha male, an alpha male is a what? A pack builder, not just a pack leader. He's a builder and a pack builder will not be out for revenge against a woman, especially an alpha male knows that his job in this world is to protect women, to build their pack, to help protect minority people, the underprivileged, the handicapped, infringed people. That is his role as a leader because he's already at the top of the food chain. So he's going to look around. Everything the light touches is ours, son. Let's build our pack together. He's not going to be threatened by rejection because he's going to know it's not going to damage his core of self-esteem. That's okay. Rihanna doesn't love me. Someone will. Look at me. I'm awesome. That's not the vibe that they take. And you can find that out by asking just a few pointed questions. I want to know what you guys have to say about Drake. I'm sure that there's other instances of whackness that I am missing. <sighs> and if you think, yeah, this Millie Bobby Brown thing, so bizarre, so bizarre. So yeah, tell me more in the comment section. And like I said, follow me on Instagram at ShallonXO and listen to my new podcast, Girl on Top, out every Wednesday. And be sure to click like and subscribe for four new videos. Louise.